So that's standard. Standard cross check, passing flight level 51. Now. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Alarm pilot and in today's video I want to explain the altimeter setting, a couple of terms like altitude, flight level and what everything is related to and the entire reason why we do this in the first place. So stay tuned, this is going to be an interesting one for a lot of you. So on a lot of flights on VATSIM I noticed that many people confuse the terms altitude and flight level and this led me to think that a little bit of clarification might be needed there. So let's start very basic. What does the term altitude and what does the term flight level refer to? An altitude is an indication on the altimeter based on the local QNH. So in our case today that is 1021. A flight level refers to an indication on the altimeter based upon standard pressure which is 1013.2 or 29.92 inches. So that's basic terminology here. Now Watson ATC really tries to emphasize the use of the correct terms here because they keep seeing people using incorrect pressures on their al altimeters. But why is that such a problem? The problem is that you are trying to use as little separation as possible in order to fit as many aircraft as possible into a certain airspace. But in order to ensure the minimum separation of 1000 feet that is required between aircraft, both aircraft need to use the very same altimeter setting. If aircraft are on a different altimeter setting, then you might no longer be able to use all your airspace as a air traffic controller. And this can be a problem. So, what do we use when? Now, the local Q&H is used whenever you are flying below the transition altitude or at the transition altitude. If we have a look at a typical chart, we can see that, for example, over here, departing Düsseldorf, Germany, we have a transition altitude of 5,000 feet. That means up to and including altitude 5,000, we have to stay on the local Q&H of 1021 in today's case. This is also the reason why you can see that down here on the initial climb clearance, we can see an altitude is given in terms of 5,000 feet. Now, when you get your IFR clearance, ATC is going to say climb via SID altitude 5000. On VATSIM, a lot of you pilots read back climbing flight level 5000. That's not correct. And if the ATC is a good one, they are going to reply, Roger, contact Houston Control, and that's it. But why is that? Well, a flight level basically is shortened by the last two zeros. To give you an example, if we look at a departure chart for Munich over here, we can see that with a transition altitude at 5000, we get flight level 70 as initial climb. So that would be 7000 on the um, altimeter, but on standard setting. So you can probably already deduct from this that a flight level is used above the transition altitude. Now, what about descent then? Well, if we are descending, then we have a so-called transition level. And the transition level is either published locally by air traffic control, which is the case, for example, everywhere in Europe, or it might be set standard in the charts, which is the case in the United States, for example. So in the United States, you have a transition level of flight level 180 always fixed. Now that implies some different ATC procedures, but we will not talk about those in this video, but much rather we want to talk about the reason why flight levels are used at all. Why don't we just use the local altimeter setting, which gives us a correct altimeter reading for the current conditions of the day. The background over here is that as we are flying over many, many countries and many different weather patterns, we don't want aircraft to have to adjust the altimeter setting all the time. This is not a convenience item, but think about it this way. If you have another aircraft coming from somewhere else that's on an opposing track to you, and this other aircraft has a different altimeter setting than you, 
you might just collide in the air, even though by the reading of your altimeter you would have been separated. And to avoid this, to make separation between aircraft easier, all aircraft switch to a standard pressure of 1013.25 hectopascals or 29.92 inches above the transition altitude. So you can see this is not just because pilots are generally lazy, which I admit we are, but this is actually done for safety reasons in order to be able to separate aircraft. Now, this also means that the altitude we've indicated right now, so right now we've got 20,000 feet indicated, is not our actual altitude. Our actual altitude, if we switch back to Q&H, as you can see, would be some 300 feet higher. Is that a problem? No, it's not. Such small differences just don't make a difference, if we're honest. However, what does make a difference is if you have one aircraft flying at the transition altitude and another one flying at the transition level. You want to make sure that those aircraft have at least 1000 feet separation in between them. So how do we make sure that that is the case? Well, over here in Europe, and I'm only going to talk about European procedures over here, over here in Europe we have air traffic control determining the transition level of the day. Now, you want at least 1000 feet separation between the transition altitude and the transition level. So in today's case, we have a transition altitude of 5000 feet and now we need to calculate what our transition level is actually going to be. So with the amount of data we now have, transition altitude 5000 and a minimum transition or a minimum distance between transition altitude and transition level of 1000 feet, the obvious answer would be, well, the transition level would be 60. So 1000 feet higher than the transition altitude. And during today's weather conditions, that is actually correct. So with the Q&H of 1013 or above, if you look closely at the altimeter, you can see that when we are changing from standard to Q&H, so watch closely what's going to happen to the altimeter now, the altimeter reading actually goes up. In other words, as we are flying on standard, we are flying higher than an aircraft flying on the local Q&H. Now, one hectopascal equals roughly 27 feet. Depending on which sources you look at, in PPL training they will tell you 30 feet, in ATPL they will tell you 27 feet, and in another country they might tell you 33 feet. But in ATPL, here in Europe, we use 27 feet. So, if you dial your altimeter up, so if you dial the QNH up, your indicated level becomes lower. In other words, you're actually flying higher than what is indicated. Therefore, with a transition altitude of 5000, we need a transition level of 60 in order to ensure that we have a so-called transition layer, that's the distance between the transition altitude and the transition level, of at least 1000 feet. Now, things do change when the QNH goes below 1013. So, let's dial in a lower QNH right now. Let's say this is 1013, this is what we have on standard, and we're passing level 260. Let's say we now have QNH 1000. You can see if I dial that in, my altimeter goes significantly down, over 300 feet. If I now change my altimeter to standard again, watch that, we're at 260 here. If I now select standard, all of a sudden we're in 264. In other words, if we now flew flight level 60, we would actually be at an altitude of 5600. Now this would mean our separation to an aircraft flying at altitude 5000, or at the transition altitude, would be less than 1000 feet actual vertical distance. The altimeter might indicate 1000 feet difference, but the actual distance would only be around about 600 feet. This is not acceptable, so we need to raise our transition level to a higher altitude, so that the transition layer, remember that's the distance between transition altitude and transition level, becomes at least 1000 feet of actual distance again. Now, in Germany, you would simply put the transition altitude, or sorry, the transition level, 1000 feet higher. So it would no longer be transition level, flight level 60, but you would raise it to flight level 70. In the UK, they're actually using transition levels spaced in 500 feet distance 
So the transition level would become flight level 65. Now, this is about all you need to know for the flight simulation. To make a practical example here, we are flying to Hamburg right now. And if we take a look at the approach chart for Hamburg for an ILS approach runway 23, you can see over here you get a transition altitude of 5000 feet. Now, if we go ahead and grab our weather for Hamburg, you can see that our QH is 1016. Now, 1016 is greater than 1013. That means we can use a transition level that is 1000 feet higher than the transition altitude. In other words, flight level 60 will be the transition level for the descent into Hamburg. In the real world, this gets a little bit more complex. If you imagine a standard balloon, and if you, comp if you pump that one up all the way with air, and now you heat it up, it's going to explode because the air expands. Likewise, if you cool it down, it would contract because the air contracts. In other words, the temperature of the air has an influence on the expansion or contraction of the air. If you have a certain amount of air and you heat it up, it's going to expand. If you have a certain amount of air and you cool it down, it's going to contract. Now, this has an influence on the altimeter. If the temperature is colder than standard, so if it's colder than um, the um, standard atmosphere, then your indicated altitude is going to be higher than your actual altitude. If the temperature is warmer than the standard, then your indicated altitude is going to be lower than the actual altitude. This also needs to be taken into account when calculating the transition level. Now this is something done by the local weather services and the finalized level is going to be forwarded from the weather services to air traffic control who are then going to publish the transition level on the ATIS. Now, this is something that is not regularly done in flight simulation and therefore I'm going to spare you the formulas on how to calculate this. If you're interested, do a little bit of research. This is stuff that you learn in ATPL theory and you learn how to calculate this stuff as well. There are a couple of questions in the theoretical ATPL examination where you have to calculate the transition level like this. Of course, in the real world, you would never do that. You would just use what is published by air traffic control. But you need to understand how this works. So if you're interested in finding out the exact formulas, I can very much recommend you to Google for it and you will find quite a couple of explanations on the internet. However, I think this would exceed the um, amount of information I want to pack in a video like this. So I do hope that you found this one interesting. I do hope that you've now understood the differences here and why air traffic control on VATSIM often insists that you read back correctly so that you say altitude 5000 and not flight level 5000. Now, last but not least, on the introduction to this video, I said that if you ever have me as an air traffic controller and you say flight level 5000, I will tell you to contact Houston Control. Why is that? Well, as you can see right now, we're flying flight level 290, but the altimeter actually indicates 29,000 feet. Therefore, flight level 5000 would equal, you guessed it, quite a higher altitude here of roughly... 500,000 feet altitude. If you're in 500,000 feet, I'm no longer responsible as air traffic controller. You can contact Houston for space control and you may be able to talk to the space shuttle along the way. Thank you very much for watching. I sure hope that you like this one. Leave your feedback in the comments below and as always, be sure to like, comment and subscribe as it does really help out the channel. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.